Hello. In this lecture, we're going to be going over some basic ideas in trigonometry. We'll be going over the definitions of some of the trigonometric functions, as well as some identities involved. So to begin with, trigonometry all begins with a right triangle. See, so suppose you have a triangle here, one right angle, 90 degrees here, and you're going to have two acute angles. I'm going to call the measure of this angle x. Now, the side that touches the angle x and the right angle, I'm going to call the adjacent side. I'm going to label it A. The other side that touches the right angle, I'm going to call O for opposite. And the slanted side, we're going to call H for the hypotenuse. Now, all of the ideas behind trigonometry are based on the ratios of these sides. So for example, the sine of x is equal to the opposite side length over the hypotenuse length. The cosine of x is equal to the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And the tangent of the angle x is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And the tangent is also equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. Now these definitions are going to be important to keep in mind. And there are also going to be a couple of specific angles that eventually you want to memorize. So for example, let's look at a triangle with two 45 degree angles. So we're going to say we have a right angle, 45, and another 45 degree angle. So that means that because this triangle is isosceles, we have two equal angles here. That means that the two sides touching the right angle are going to have the same length. I'm going to call that length L. And now by the Pythagorean theorem, which says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can figure out the length of the third side. So l squared plus l squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So when you solve that equation, you get the hypotenuse is equal to l times the square root of 2. So this means that the sine of 45 degrees is equal to L divided by L times the square root of 2. And the L's on the top and the bottom of the fraction cancel. You get the sine is equal to 1 over root 2. You can also write that as square root of 2 over 2 to simplify. We also have the cosine of 45 degrees which is going to end up being the same thing, L over L root 2. That also ends up being square root of 2 over 2. And finally, the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to L divided by L, which ends up just being 1. So you see that there are a couple special angles, like 45 degrees, where it's possible to figure out exactly what the value of the trig function is. So we can actually make a little table of all of the angles that we can figure out in this way. And it's very helpful to memorize these angles and the sine and cosine of each one. So our table is going to have the angle x, sine of x, and cosine of x. Turns out we can get exact values for the trig functions for angles of 0, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. So for 0 degrees, the sine is going to be 0, the cosine is going to be 1. For 30 degrees, the sine is 1 half, the cosine is the square root of 3 divided by 2. 
For 45 degrees, we just figured out that the sine is square root of 2 divided by square root of, divided by 2. Likewise, the cosine is the square root of 2 divided by 2. For 60 degrees, the sine is going to be root 3 divided by 2. The cosine is going to be 1 half. And for 90 degrees, the sine is 1, and the cosine is going to be 0. Now, it's really helpful to memorize these angles because they come up a lot. And to get the sines and cosines of some other angles, there are a number of equations that we call identities that we can use. So here are a couple basic identities that are helpful to remember. For any angle x, we say sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So that means for any angle, you take the sine of the angle, you square it. You take the cosine of the angle and square it. You add those two squares together, you should get exactly 1. Now, another helpful identity is called the sum identity. There are also difference identities. And that says that if you have the sine of the sum of two angles, sine of a plus b equals sine a times cosine b plus cosine a sine b. And we're going to see in a sec how this can be really helpful. First, I want to list all the other identities that are like this. Just as we have sine a plus b, we could have sine a minus b. That's going to be sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. And there are also two for cosine. So the sum identity for cosine, cosine a plus b equals cosine a cosine b minus sine a times sine b. And finally, cosine of a minus b equals cosine a cosine b plus sine a times sine b. These are all pretty helpful to memorize, and if you're taking a trig trigonometry class or pre-calculus class, you're probably going to get a big list of identities, but these are the ones that are probably the most important to memorize, because you can actually prove other identities using these. For example, there's an identity that says sine of 2a equals 2 sine a cosine a. But suppose that we don't know this identity. We're given sine of twice an angle, and we need to figure it out, but we don't remember this one. We can actually use our sum identity. We can say sine of 2a equals sine of a plus a. That's what 2a basically is. And that's going to be sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine a. And that ends up being the same thing that we had earlier, 2 sine a cosine a. So even if you don't know all the other identities, you can actually prove them pretty easily. Now, let's say that you want to figure out the sine or cosine of an angle, except we don't have that angle right in front of us. So let's say that I want to figure out the cosine of 15 degrees. Here's a way that you can pull that off using the angles that we already know and some identities. I can say that 15 is equal to 45 minus 30. And now 45 and 30 are both angles that we know the trig functions of already. So I'm going to rewrite this using my difference identity here as cosine 45 cosine 30 minus, uh, sorry, plus sine 45 sine 30. 
And now you can go back to your table here. You can rewrite all of these trig functions. Cosine 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. Plus sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Sine of 30 is 1 half. So now square root of 2 times square root of 3 gives you square root of 6. Divided by 2 divided by 2 gives you division by 4 when we multiply these first two fractions together. For the second set of fractions, we get square root of 2 times 1 gives us square root of 2. Over 2 times 2 gives us 4. So that means that our solution is now square root of 6 plus square root of 2 all divided by 4. If you want to know what this is about equal to, it comes to roughly 0.96. So you can see that even if you don't have the exact value of the sine or cosine of an angle, and you don't have a calculator in front of you, by being resourceful and using some identities that you remember, you can still figure out the sine or cosine of the angle. All right. So using the, these identities, you can get started in trigonometry. As you go through, you're going to learn more complicated ones, but remember that these are the basics, and a lot of other identities that you learn can be traced back to some equation involving these. All right. With that in mind, good luck with your trigonometry courses, and take care.